there. So let's find our way to our seats so you don't get caught walking around. <laughs> All right, let's bow our heads. God, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. We love you, and we just want to glorify your name. We bring glory and honor to you today. We come today to celebrate in your house. We want to celebrate your name. And we put you first and foremost. It's all about you, God. We just pray that you would bless this service this morning. Bless everything from beginning to end, before and after. And all that we do, we just want to bring glory to your name, God. Help us. Lead us, guide us, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. I have quite a few announcements to get through this morning, but I do want to recognize Jess, Jess Gills here, coming from Buffalo, where it is cold. Nice to see you back, Jess. All right. The cafe is going to close at, at 1030 from now on for the remainder of the service and reopen when the service uh, is, is over so that we're all participating in the service and not getting distracted. All right. Uh, there's an upcoming fundraiser four weeks from today. That's Sunday, March 31st. We will have a fundraiser right over here, wherever. Uh, <laughs> doesn't say. Uh, a pasta bar and salad uh, following the service again March 31st. Adults are $8. Children 2 and up are $4. Please sign up so that we know how much food to prepare. And I think my brother's cooking. I'm not positive on that, but he is. All right. He's a really good cook. <clears throat> Unlike me. Okay. <clears throat> More sign-ups. Prayer and fasting we, uh, is beginning March 12th. Okay. It's coming and it's March 12th through April 20th. So sign up to participate in corporate prayer and fasting. I signed up today. Uh, I'm going to fast on Thursdays. But the sign-up sheet is, is, in the, is in the foyer in that kind of shelf thing where we put all those sign-up clipboards. So find your way to that before you leave today and get signed up so we could do this together. Amen. All right. Uh, in your bulletin this morning, there's a little... Uh, blurb of information on praise flags and banners and the colors and meanings of them. So if you'd like to take a look at that to find that information. This Saturday there is a men's breakfast, 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, I'm told Tom Mundo is an excellent cook. So if you're feeling dangerous, men, come on out. Try Tom's cooking. See who's a better cook, him or my brother. I don't know. <laughs> All right. And last one. Nope. Two more. <laughs> the prayer prayer over... Oh, wait, that's not this one. Never mind. I screwed up. Okay, play practice will begin next Sunday, March 10th, after the morning service. So if you're involved in that, uh, no, that's when it's going to start, next Sunday. All right. I think Kevin is coming next, and he's bringing reinforcements. All right. Thank you. I need reinforcements. Okay. Several weeks ago, we said that we were going to be doing a special offering uh, for the lighting project that we had already accomplished. Uh, that date, of course, has been moved to April 7th. See your bulletin for that. What I wanted to do and what I asked Rich was, I knew Rich, uh, when he saw what we had accomplished and everything, he not only had a passion for what we did, but he sees what we're doing moving forward. So I asked him to kind of just throw the challenge out to you as far as w what we're going to do for raising to pay this off. So... Um, about a year ago, uh, God gave me a vision of Brookside, and uh, the vision was, it came in a dream, and it was, you know, um, having to, like, struggle to get here, to get through deep water, and I finally got to Brookside, across the brook, and Brookside was so full, there was nowhere to sit, and Patty and I couldn't even sit next to each other, because, because we couldn't. Uh, it was so full, there were so many people. And part of that vision was a church like this, with lights and up-to-date modern equipment. And uh, now, I, I actually had wanted to share this vision and just never got a, a chance to. So the elders and, and, and pastor didn't know that I had this, this vision for Brookside. But this is pretty much what it looked like. And uh, so I believe that these lights are God-ordained and, and that this, this uh, whatever, you, AV system with the TVs and stuff, that God is ordaining this. And then I also just wanted to, 
to point out that Patty and I travel and we visit a lot of churches. And we visit some small churches and we visit some very large churches. And to be honest with you, the large churches that we go to that are full of people and full of young people that are vibrant, vibrant and alive, this is what they look like. You know, and I, I hate to use this word because it's going to date me, but this is what a cool church looks like. <laughs> and this is what a church looks like that young, young people and younger people want to come to and worship the Lord. So we're on that step t t towards that. Um, and I just want to end with this thing. And I know, you know, sometimes, you know, this is different. But in drag racing, I like to use the analogy that the definition of insanity is continuing to do the same thing and expecting a different result. So this is different. This is a new thing. But we can expect a different result through it. So we need to get behind the leadership of the church and on March 31st. April 7th, okay, uh, they're going to do uh, a, a special offering to pay for this stuff. Folks, we need to pay for it. And, and if it hurts, we need to pay for it. So, and I'm not the pastor, I don't have any, you know, I'm not, I don't, I have nothing, no skin in this game other than this is my church and I love it. And, and let's move forward, let's do something different. And let's do a new thing and ha invite our friends to come to the cool church. Amen. 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 Thank you, Rich. Thank you. Okay, amen. Moving forward. Here we go. Good morning, Brookside. So in the last month, we've heard a lot about what Mandy was doing with the children's ministries. We've heard about the awesome worship team, which we all know we have. It's been laid on my heart to come and honor our pastor and the elders, anybody who is in leadership. Folks, these people are here on their own time with the Spirit of God in them. They are here serving us. They are our front line. If you do not believe me, you can come during the week, and you will find pastor, you will find some of the elders praying for you throughout the week. Now, what I'm going to speak about is prayer and fasting is coming up. If we are coming here, church, only to receive the word of God and we take it, we're being selfish. We need to give back. We need to give to each other as well as we need to honor our pastor, and the elders that serve in this church. We need to put our protection up for them. We need to place a barrier protection up for them. Because I'm going to let you in on a little secret, folks. He's no different than you and I. He goes through trials. He goes through temptations. He has to face it all. And when you sign up to be in a ministry, I don't know if you people know this or not, but the enemy will come at you, and he comes at you hard. He will throw fiery darts at you, whether you're ready for him or not. So if we love each other as a family, we should be praying for each other. If you, if you folks look a bit at this cross, it goes two ways. We need our own relationship with God, but church, we need to spread our arms. We need to be there for others, not just Brookside, but take it out into the streets. So, especially with the prayer and fasting coming up, this would be a great opportunity to take the time to pray for your church family, including your leaders. Let the Holy Spirit guide you what to pray for. I'm not saying you need to come up here and put your hands on pastor and put your hands all over the elders and, you know. Let Holy Spirit guide you. Let him work through you. If you feel there is something that you really need to speak out, then you go to that person. But let's be in prayer. Let's be serious. Let's pray for protection. Let's pray for wisdom, for knowledge, and just boldness all over the elders. And I just, I just want to say thank you to the elders and the leadership who is there praying for not only my family, but for all of yours who take their time out of their day to do that. That's all I have. God, hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. I'm glad I'm alive. How about you? 
How many can say you're alive in Jesus? Oh, hallelujah. That's really being alive, I want you to know. Well, we have something that we're going to do at this moment, and it has to do with a group that's going to Israel from our church, okay? They're joining another church, and I don't know how many churches actually might be involved, but there'll be people that'll be joining them. And so we're going to pray over them, and I'm going to invite them up here, and then you can join us in prayer because we want God to protect them while they're going, while they're there, and on their return. Also, we want their lives to be impacted as they're over in Israel, as they see where Jesus walked, and certainly where a lot of things in the Bible took place. And certainly, you know as well as I do that terrorism is still over there in Israel. There, We want them to be protected in every way. Can you say amen? amen. So from our church, the following are going to be going. We got Robin, Sally, Chet, Chris, and Pat. And then I've asked that we have another person come up because we're going to pray over our own here. But Michelle... Malacrinos is going to come and stand in for all the others. And I don't even know who else is going. So will you all come that are going to Israel? And we're going to lay hands on them. You that pray over Michelle, you're praying for the others that are going to be part of this total group that will be going, okay? Praise God. All right. Anyone's welcome to come up here and pray over them and... We're just going to believe the Lord. It's, they'll find you up here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Hey. Here, come here. Oh, praise God. Amen. Oh, Father, we do thank you for this divine opportunity, Father, to impart to these, Father God, prayers from our heart to theirs. And yea, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, go, go, go. Go to the place where the Lord once walked. Be saturated and immersed in the spirit of his presence in that place. Go there with hungry hearts. Go there with opened eyes. Go there with open ears. Absorb everything that is offered. Everything that God has ordained for you at this time. Yea, be immersed, be immersed, be immersed. And yea, Father God, we do pray for a special prayer of protection for each and every one. We cancel the assignments of hell in the name of Jesus, that no weapon that is formed against them will prosper. But yea, they will be enveloped in your presence in that place, that when they come back, they will have something to share. And yea, the divine purpose in all of this will glorify your Son, our Lord, our Savior, our Healer, our Deliverer, our Peace, our Portion, the one who paid the price for us all, the one who shed his blood on Calvary's cross, that he will be glorified. And we thank you for all these things, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, bro. Enjoy. I know you. God, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
if you'll stand, Suzanne's going to come and share the scripture today. Praise God. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's been a full morning already. Now join me in 2 Chronicles 7, 14 through 15. And my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sins, and will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my eyes <laughs> prayer offered in this place. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. God is good. Can you say amen? All right, we're going to celebrate Holy Communion today. I'll tell you what, when we celebrate Holy Communion, I believe things can happen. Boy, we can get a fresh cleansing. How many could say I could use a fresh cleansing today? I'll tell you what, the healing power of Jesus can be released in our bodies. And we just need to open our hearts to it and look at it and say, hey, I'm not just going to do this in a routine way. I'm going to connect with Jesus. I have a passage of scripture I'm going to read. I know we read this quite often in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, but I just want you to know that Paul, excuse me, Paul, because he wasn't there when Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, he made it very plain that by revelation he received the same thing. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm going to commence reading with verse 23. It reads this way, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. I want to ask a question before we celebrate Holy Communion. How many of you that are married out there have ever exchanged your vows again? Any of you? Why did you do that? I <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Next Sunday we can hear all about it. But listen. You know what happens in marriage sometimes, the familiarity, the routine, the busyness of life, that people that have come to me and said, would you officiate at the renewal of my vows with my husband or my wife, or they may come together and ask at the same time. They're coming because they want to strike the original match. They want to go back. They want to recapture something something that is no longer there like it was at one time. You know, the Word of God makes it very plain that we can leave our first love. How many know that? In fact, if you look at Revelation chapter 2, verse 4, it talks about this concerning the church at Ephesus. They did ten things right. Jesus commended them on those ten things. But he says, I have somewhat against you. Because not that you've lost your first love. A lot of people talk about losing their first love. You don't lose it. You leave your first love. You leave it for something else. You really, really do. This morning, I believe as we approach the Lord's table, we can, at that moment, renew our vows with Jesus. And I think some of us really need to do that, okay? I believe that... This gives us an opportunity to do that. Listen, as you take these emblems today, and I want you to picture yourself standing before Jesus, and as you stand before him, you're renewing your vows to him. Maybe in words like these, I take you, Jesus, 
as my Lord and my Savior. I pledge myself to be true to you in sickness and in health and joy and sorrow and prosperity and in adversity and forsaking all others to serve you alone as my master. And then you may go on to say, not till death do us part, but till death shall bring us together when we're in heaven. Can you say amen? amen. So I'm going to encourage you to do that. You're going to be in a group, and it's too easy to get taken up with the dynamics of the group. Focus on Jesus, and something dynamic is going to happen in you today. You know why? Because I believe that. Will you stand? Will the servers come, please? And we're going to pray here in just a moment. I'm waiting for the servers to come and get in place. And i just say this while we're waiting for that. Come down the center aisle. You don't have to be a member of Brookside Ministries, but you need to know Jesus in your heart. Can you say amen? Because we're coming to a, a table of love. And when we celebrate Holy Communion, we're reminding ourselves that he loves us and he's demonstrated that by dying in our place, shedding his precious blood and taking the stripes for our healing. Amen? Dear Father, right now, I just ask that you touch our lives afresh and anew. May today, when we celebrate Holy Communion, may it not be just something that we go through. May it not be the same old, same old, but Lord, may we reach out and touch Jesus by your spirit, I pray. Come with your quickening power May there be cleansing in our hearts today. May there be healing in our bodies. I ask that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Come on down. Come down the middle aisle. There's a lot of room around the altar.
How many can say, my lamp is lit today? Amen. We talked about that last Sunday morning. And God wants to light your lamp and my lamp are fresh and anew every day of our lives. Can you say amen? All right. What we're going to do is stand again and invite the Holy Spirit. And then the worship team is going to lead us in some real great worship. Can you say amen to that? All right, together now, dear Spirit of God, we're ready. Come now, come upon us, quicken us, challenge us. In Jesus' name, we welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Hallelujah. Yes, he's here. He's on here. He's come upon us right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Unmatched. 
unmatched in all your wisdom in love and justice you will reign and every knee will bow we bring our expectations our hope is anchored in your name the name of jesus
talking less, I'm talking through your tongue. Never let me act unless I'm acting in your blood. Help me keep on walking, so I'm a walk just like your, your son. that you gave you bore my sin on the cross it has stayed now I'm alive will forever remain
darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When darkness is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love well, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love Oh, and she no longer has a place to hide and I am not a captive to the lies oh, no. to leave my past behind no I won't be shaken I won't be shaken my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love for my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I church. Well, there's power that can break off every chain. Yeah, there's power that can empty out a grave. There's resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name. Power in your name. My doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I Standing on the rock, my 
firm foundation, my firm foundation, yes, I my claim oh you are my solid rock you're the only rock you're the only foundation that will last yes I will build my house on the rock oh I will build my life on that solid rock Oh, I sink my life into the rock, into the deep. All other things will wash away. All other things will wash away.
Jesus, precious Jesus, bring that new wine, bring it out, pour it out on me, Shout at church, so we shout from the depths of our reading lungs for the blood that you shed as our ransom. Yeah, the sound heaven shakes. Cry holy, your people cry holy, holy, holy. There is no end. Your people cry holy. Your people cry holy. Your people cry. Come. 
Thank you, Lord. We love you. Glory to God. Praise God for a time of worship. Can you say amen? I've really enjoyed it this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I know there's a word here, so if you'll put your ears on, your spiritual ears, turn them on. As I was driving this morning, I drove by a barn, and they had just demolished it, and all that was left was the, the cement floor. And I thought to myself, I wonder what those people think, an error gone by. And then I heard the Lord speak and say, tell your people that I know what it's like to be stripped of everything, that I know what it's like to be a man of no reputation, that I know what it's like to be slandered and misused and even cost my life. But the Lord says today, am I not the repairer of the breach? Do I not rebuild the walls of the past and cause them to be fruitful? For the Lord says today, it may look like ruins around you, but the Lord says today, I am rebuilding that foundation if you will allow me. It will not be walls of the past. They will withstand. They will withstand. They will withstand. Because they are walls built by me. And as we worship, you know, we come here and we worship God. And it is a good thing. He hears our worship. And it is a sweet, sweet sound to him. I tell you, it is a sweet, sweet sound to him. And still, as I was at the altar, I, I see him crying. I see him crying. Because I think he says, so many of you struggle. It's a chore. You labor to worship me. And I think he says there's two reasons. Number one, you labor because you don't know me. You really don't know me or you wouldn't have to labor. You wouldn't have to labor to worship me if you really knew me. You really wouldn't have to worship if you really knew me. And number two, it's because there is a real war going on in our flesh. There is a real war between our flesh and our spirit. And it is a real war. And there are people here that don't feel worthy to be even in this room. That's how bad they feel. But I believe the Lord would say it's a lie from the devil. If you feel worthless, it's a lie from the devil. Because you are valuable to me. You are worth far more than you can imagine. Do you know how valuable you are to me, he says. Do you know, do you really know how valuable you are to him? He says the value you are to me is in this. Do you know how you determine the value of something? The value is determined by how much someone is willing to give. You are valuable because he says, I think you all know how much he gave. Our worship isn't determined by what we do. We come here thinking it's, by, it's not what we do. It's the attitude of our heart. And oh, how he wants us to live it with that attitude. The usher, ushers would come, please. Pastor, I just want to say first. God, God brought it to my head this morning. 
as I was up here. And he wants me to tell all the children, and that means all of our grown-up children that are inside of ourselves, plus the ch little children that's outside of ourselves, that he loves them. And he died for you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Listen up, we got some prayer concerns here. We're going to lift before the Lord, and then we're going to ask somebody to lead us in prayer. Ruby is home from the hospital. She's over in the nursing home at Sunbury. She's a real miracle. Continue to pray that the hole in her bowel will be completely healed. Pray for Angel, because it's really been a very difficult time for her and her mother going through this time. So lift them both up. Victoria, I was over at her house on Tuesday. She's still ill. I think she's about in the 70th or 71st day of being ill. So will you lift her up in prayer? Also, there's a family that needs to really be prayed for because two people, young people, 10th grader and 8th grader, I won't tell you their names, um, they committed suicide, so we need to lift the parents up in prayer. Tim Boyer still needs our prayers. It's just believe God to heal him completely. Dale and Pauline are sick. They need our prayers for healing. Justina has been sick. Let's lift her up in prayer and believe God. Uh, Cindy, uh, she's going to be undergoing a, a shot to alleviate the pain and her ankle or foot from the spur. And uh, so lift her up in prayer that God would heal her completely. We got the women's retreat coming up in the near future. We have a marriage seminar coming up after that. We need to lift both of these events up in prayer. Dennis Kramer's coming at the end of March. So let's ask God to have his way, amen. Will you stretch your hand in this direction? Praise God. Father, we come before you with thanksgiving, for you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the mighty God, the one who saves, the one who redeems. We say thank you, Father. We lift up Ruby and Angel, Lord. You know every, every uh, need that is there. We just say thank you, Father, for what you've already done, but more so, Father, for what you're going to do. Lord, we believe that there's evidence that we don't see that is going to happen. We say thank you for that. For Victoria, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come against everything that is trying to afflict her. We cast them out where Jesus would cast them in the name of our Father and, and our, our uh, Son, Jesus. We say, say thank you, Jesus, for doing this. Tim Boyer, we just pray for you that uh, the healing will continue, Lord, and we just uh, ask a mighty blessing upon your life and for how you serve the Lord. We lift up Dale and Pauline, and we say thank you, Father, for, for uh, how you've blessed them. But, Lord, they need an extra touch of you, and, and we just ask, Lord, that you touch them. Uh, Justina, Lord, we just uh, pray that you just heal her body, Lord, bring her back in health. And be with Cindy as she goes for this uh, 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 procedure, Lord. Just uh, give her strength, Lord, to get her through it, Lord. We say thank you. And, and all these other things that we've... We've got coming up, Lord, we ask you, Lord, just to help us through them. Give us illumination so that we may know uh, what, what we need to do to get through these things. Lord, we ask that you take these gifts that we're going to receive this morning, multiply them, take and use the givers. In Christ's name we pray, amen.
Praise the Lord. God's so good. Can you say amen? Boy, I just love Jesus. I'm happy to be here with his people today. I believe our worship was wonderful. I enjoyed it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is so good. This morning, I want you to turn in your Bible, if you would, to Hebrews chapter 12. I'm going to read uh, verse 1 and part of verse 2. And I want to speak to you about something that's so important. And it has to do with a race. Look up here, if you would. Okay, I got to look back there. What race is God asking you to run? And I believe today we need to realize that God has a race for all of us. Can you say amen? All right, listen to the word. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. By the way, stand up. I'm sorry I didn't have you stand up. I'm hurrying just a little bit because it's taken us a while to get to the, where we are today, okay? All right, I'm going to start over again. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Let's ask God to guide us. Dear Father, here we are. We need your help today. I plead the blood of Jesus over this body. I ask, Lord, that we all get on the same page this morning. Help us to do that now, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus, for your glory. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I want to speak to you about something that happened years ago. In fact, this is a true story. This is about me, okay? I don't preach about myself too often, but the Lord put this on my heart as a lead in as we look at this particular passage. It was spring. It was my senior year. I was 17. Already, I had been involved with football, I played both ways, offense and defense. I'd already been involved with basketball. I lettered in both of those sports, and then currently I was in the baseball season, and I would letter in that sport as well. I want you to know all of a sudden this young man came up that I knew. He was on the track team, and he said to me, Jerry, he said, would you like to get out of school this afternoon? And right away I said, yes. It was starting to get it warmer out. I wanted to be outside. I would be out later practicing baseball, but I wanted to start earlier in the afternoon, okay? And he said, well, the guy that runs the 440 in track, my teammate, he had a problem with the coach, and the coach says he can't go to the meet. Would you like to run the 440? Back then it was yards rather than meters. And right away, I said, yeah, I'll do that. After all, I wanted to get out of school. And so the time came when we got on the bus and we were loading up to leave, and my friend spoke up to me right away, and he says, Jerry, don't quit the race, whatever you do. Don't quit the race. And then another one chimed in and said, Jerry, don't quit the race. I got to tell you something, though. I've never been to a track meeting in my life, although I was involved in the other three sports that I mentioned. I really didn't know what went on at a track meet. All I know, I was supposed to run 440 yards, and hopefully I would win. Okay? So we got there, and of course, prior to that, I, I might add this, that they had to find a pair of shorts for me, a tank top or whatever they wear, you know, and... Uh, they had to find some track shoes, and by the way, they didn't fit too well. But nonetheless, I'm out of school, and I'm happy going to this uh, track meet, okay? Well, the time came to run the 440, and I want you to know, in that particular county, the fastest guy that would run that event was in this particular event on that day. And... 
boy, I'll tell you, when the gun went off, man, I took off like a rabbit. I really did. <laughs> I was in second place for three quarters of that race. But I learned something while I was there, and that was this. My conditioning at the football level was different than my conditioning now. My conditioning playing basketball was higher than now. I'm playing baseball, and that's rather pokey, by the way. And so when I came around the third turn, I'm in second. I want you to know that track was not manicured very well. On that last turn there, it was, it was filled with sand and cinders. I don't know where they were. And man, my legs were starting to really yell out at me and scream. You can't keep going, Jerry. Well, I remembered what they said. Whatever you do, Jerry, don't quit. And so guess what? I kept on going, and then some were starting to pass me <laughs> because I was starting to slow down. And then I did a stupid thing. Now, none of you ever have done anything stupid, but nonetheless, what I did was I said, I'm going to get down. And I'm even going to dive across <laughs> the finish line. Instead, I fell in the cinders. Both elbows, both knees. When I went down, I got all that scuffed up and scratched up. And then my head turned and I, my face is bleeding. But I got up and I walked across the line. I finished. Not like I started all. <laughs> because <laughs> I had become a casualty. <laughs> but anyhow, I want you to know that that was a challenge to me. I wasn't on the track team. I just wanted to get out of school. But I decided I'm going out for track. So I had to divide my time between baseball and track. And later on, we placed third in the county in the 440 relay. I ran the third leg of that and we we placed third so I was thankful for that but boy I was razzed like you couldn't believe everybody was just laughing and they were having a great time they took a picture of me they brought crutches over and all of that but I want you to know I learned something from that and that was this when I got saved I could look back to that and say you know what I'm running a race for Jesus Christ and there's times I'm going to get tired. There's times I'm going to want to quit. There's times where I'm going to say, man, this is too hard and too difficult. Today I want to talk to you about running the race that Jesus has set before you. Verse 1 declares that Jesus has a pre-appointed course for your race in this life. And I want you to know right now, you're not smart enough and neither am I to pick out the course. He picks it out for us, and I thank God for that. Amen. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus has gone ahead of you. He's prearranged the course, and now he pleads, and he's pleading with you right now because he's here. He's been walking up and down in this place. I want you to know he pleads with you to run the race he has set before you. Let's begin by looking at that word run because... This is not fast walking, by the way. This is running. This is a picture of a person who has jumped into the race and is pressing ahead with all his might to reach the goal that is before him. He's running at such a fast pace that he is covering a lot of ground. His eyes are fixed where? They're fixed on the finish line. He makes a run towards that goal, and he says, I'm going to finish my race. Amen? I'm here to tell you in order for you, in order for me, to be able to really finish our race, we've got to do something. It tells us in verse 1, lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. I want you to look up there, if you will, at the word weight here just for a second. It's from a Greek word that describes a burden or something so heavy that impedes a runner from running his race as he should. God wants you, he wants me to lay aside every weight. He really does. Because he doesn't want us to give up on the race that God has for us. And I want you to know this word was particularly used in that day for people that were running the race, okay? And 
I want you to know that they nearly had to take all their clothes off in order to lighten themselves in order that they would not be hindered in any way. They had their eye on the prize, so they were determined to strip off all weight that might potentially keep them from winning or running the race. I'm here to tell you today that sinful habits and attitudes do that to you and me when we walk with the Lord. I want you to know if we don't remove them, they will eventually weigh you down and knock you out of the race of faith. How many can say amen? I'm here to tell you the Spirit of God is urging you this morning. In fact, He's urging you and He's urging me to take a look at our lives and we are to remove everything that weighs us down and keeps us from a life of obedience. We've got to be honest with ourselves and with God. Can I tell you about God? He loves honesty. He really, really does. My question to you at this moment is this. Do you have a habit or wrong attitude that binds you? Are you plagued by some fear that weighs you down and keeps you from fulfilling your potential in Jesus Christ? I want you to know that God wants you and I to run the race. And how are we to run it? With endurance, okay? Look up here at the word endurance just for a second, okay? Because it translates a Greek word that pictures the attitude of a person who is under a very heavy load, but notice, but has decided to stay out and stand firm. Boy, that is neat. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. That's what God's looking for in you and me. We've got to run our race, but we've got to hang in there. That's what he wants. This person that chooses to do that, I want you to know, will go on and become what God wants them to come. And no matter what challenges come their way, they are going to keep on keeping on. Can you say amen? How many know it's easy to start out in the beginning to do something? It's a lot of fun. But I'm here to tell you something. God wants us to be able to finish. And really, finishing requires a commitment to endure until that race is completed. Let me give you an example of endurance from the world of boxing or the sport of boxing, okay? I'm going to ask you this morning, how many of you, you have heard of Gentleman Jim Corbett. Any of you ever heard of him? Oh, yeah. He was quite a boxer. In fact, at the end of the 19th century, he held the heavyweight title of the world for five consecutive years. Listen up, because on May 21st, 1891, Jim Corbett would meet Peter Jackson for the longest fight on record. It would be a fight to the finish, by the way. And to me, this gives me a picture of what endurance is all about. The match was declared a draw after 61 rounds. Can you believe that? Boxing matches today are limited to 12 rounds. Have you ever seen boxers after 12 rounds? Aren't they exhausted? They look pretty beat up, don't they? But Jackson and Corbett fought the equivalent of five entire boxing matches in one fight with an extra round thrown in for good measure. That's really awesome. But someone asked him, what was the key that he could keep going on and fight that long? And again, it's a picture of endurance. This is what he said. I fight one more round. When your feet are so tired, you have to shuffle back to the center of the ring. Fight one more round. When your arms are so tired that you can hardly lift your hands to come on guard, fight one more round. When your nose is bleeding and your eyes are black, fight one more round. When you're so tired you wish your opponent would crack you on the jaw and put you to sleep, fight one more round. Always remembering that the man who fights one more round is never whipped. He's always battling one more round. Years ago, I went to the hospital and talked to a, a man. They were talking about uh, amputating his leg. And it seems like every time I went there, he had further bad news. I shared this story with him. He was a Christian. And he knew about healing and all of that. I said, fight one more round. That's all you've got to do. You don't have to worry about tomorrow. You don't have to worry what comes next. Just fight one more round. He told me how much that encouraged him and helped him through that very difficult time in his life. 
and they didn't amputate his leg. So I thank God for that. But it's, even as I started out today, I know Pastor Johnny was tied up, and he told me that they're going to start the track season this week, right? And I shared a little bit from my own life about that. I'm here to tell you whether it's boxing or whether it's track, you got to hang in there. Can you say amen? And sometimes you want to quit. You really, really do. Listen, for us, this process can be so challenging that it's called a race. Look up here because this Greek word, okay, that really talks about race, translates race, and it means to struggle or to wrestle. And we say to ourselves, well, running a race and wrestling, they don't mix it. That's two different sports, okay. Well, I want you to know that when you run, and if you run a marathon, that's 26 miles, okay. But any running event, it takes so much out of you. But in order to stay in a long race, okay, especially a long one, a wrestling and your emotions may involve, evolve as your mind screams at you to throw in the towel and quit. Have you ever felt like that, Johnny, sometimes with your body telling you that? Man, but you just kept right on going, amen? Especially when that weariness sets in, screaming that the race is too difficult or it's longer than you anticipated or expected, and it's requiring more effort than you originally bargained for. I'm here to tell you, but you can rejoice this morning because the course and the path that God has chosen you or Jesus has chosen you is something that was mapped out in eternity past. You know, a lot of people are bored. Do you want to know why? Because they never found what God wants them to do. I'm not saying everybody will be in full-time ministry, but I believe that all of us need to be involved in ministry. We're not just to receive, but God wants to bring us to a place that we can give. Amen? I, I take my hat off to Sunday school teachers here. I say to myself, you know, many times they're not appreciated but I want you to know that when you get to heaven, you're going to look back and say that, that those teachers were really special because they imparted to you the word of God. Can you say amen? And God wants us to come to that place where we're going to make a decision. I'm going to run the race that God has for me. And he wants us to know what that particular race is, okay? What he wants you to do today is to jump into the race and run with all of your might fixing your eyes on Jesus and the goal he has set before you. That's why he uses the word that is the Apostle Paul endurance here or patience in the King James Version when he talks about the race that has been set before us. I want you to think about the race that's been set before us because I've been talking about that, but let me just show you up here, okay? Here we go. These two words are our translation of a Greek word which means to be appointed. How should that speak to you and me today? Well, I think it should speak to you and me this way. God wants you to know that you're not only saved from hell. How many are glad it's more than that? Oh, yeah. I'm glad I am saved from hell, but there's a lot more to it, okay? There's a purpose that he has for you. And there's a plan by which that purpose could be realized. I think for most of us, that's on the back burner. We've got to live this life. We've got to work. We've got to earn money to support ourselves and our families, and that's all good. But at the same time, there is a destiny for you and me because one of these days we will stand before Jesus, and when we stand before him, all our excuses are not going to do anything. When he looks at you and looks at me, how many remember in the book of Revelation about his eyes? Man, a lot. When he looks into you, into me, into our lives, he sees right through all our excuses. Can you say amen? He really does. Let me just say this. If you call this your church home, then there's a reason why you're here. And you have a race to run, but there's something that God wants you to do even at a local level that's part of that race. I find we got I have people tell me, Pastor, I I God speaks to me, but I just don't do anything about it. You know what? So many times I have spoken, uh, Richard has spoken, others have spoken about 
how we need to let God change our lives so that we'd be willing to serve him and not just come and receive the blessings. Can you say amen? In fact, right now, I wonder, how many times has God spoken to you about getting involved, especially when we talk about an area where there's a need, and you feel that little prompting inside, but you don't do it. You say, well, one of these days I'm going to do it. You know what? I've had people tell me that for years. Ten years goes by, and they still haven't done it. Twenty years goes by. I don't know what's going to get them started, you know. But God wants to use you and me. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And God today wants us to realize that serving God is more than just worship, which is special to have worship. It's more than hearing the word. It's doing something about it. Can you say amen? But then I have people tell me, well, I would like to do it, but I just don't know how. Well, if he's appointed you, he also will enable you. He always enables you to do what he calls you to do. But you've got to step out. I remember what the day came when I got asked to teach junior boys. I said, okay. I was just going to be a substitute. I didn't know it would be a moving target in that class. <laughs> and then the teacher, he decided to go away most of the summer. And so now I'm pushed into that, and now I'm the teacher. But I remember that Sunday when the anointing of God came on me and all of a sudden these boys came to an attention. And I says, oh, that's the enablement. That's God's ability to help me to do it. But I had to step out. I had to take a step when they asked me. Some of you been asked, and you know when you've been asked that God is saying down in your heart, hey, I want you to do that, but you don't do it. I have people tell me how they're going to save the whole world. <laughs> Some aren't quite that deluded. <laughs> but I have some there talk about this huge ministry they're going to have. You know where it starts? It starts small. He that's faithful in the least is faithful in much. You got to get out of the boat. Can you say amen? You can't stay in the boat. You got to get out. You know, I was thinking about Peter this morning, and I thought to myself, you know, he saw Jesus walking on the water. And, of course, back in those days, they, when there was a big storm like that, a lot of times they thought there'd be ghosts or something they might see. But what did Peter say? If this is you, tell me to come out on the water. And guess what? Peter got out of the boat. He walked on the water. How many know you can't walk on the water without God's help? <laughs> I'll take you over here to the Susquehanna and we'll see if you can walk on the water. <laughs> but you know what? All of a sudden, he got his eyes on all of the difficulties, the wind and the waves, and he began to sink. And what happened? Jesus reached down. How did he get back to the boat? Did he swim? I think he walked back to the boat with Jesus. You know, is this your church? If it is, God wants to use you here. If this is your church, there are areas where we need a lot of help. And I believe your total destiny can in part be realized by starting out small in a church setting to do what God wants you to do. He may enlarge that. Hey, maybe there's a Billy Graham here. I don't know. Maybe there's an Oral Roberts here. I don't know that. But I'm here to tell you that God just wants us to be faithful in that which is the least. Amen? And remember what the scripture says, looking unto Jesus. Hey, Peter, you took your eyes off. Get them back on Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, who's the author and finisher of your faith. Now, it's time for me to close. And you'll soon be in the parking lot, and you can escape what I've said. <laughs> and what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. You can say, whew, man, I made it again. <laughs> or you can, in your heart of hearts, say yes to God. You can say yes to Jesus. 
boy, there's a race that I must run. There are victories to be won. Can you say amen? And it's his power that keeps us true and keeps us on course no matter what. I'm going to tell you the honest truth that some people maybe won't tell you. Living for Jesus is not easy. And I'm amazed when people come to me and say, Pastor, I'm really under attack. You'll probably hear this from me. I haven't always said it, but you'll probably hear it from me. I said, what do you expect? Richard talked about war. Didn't he? How many heard that? If you're going to walk with God, you're going to be attacked. Wake up because I want you to know that's part of being a Christian. Because the enemy wants to fight you on every hand. But I'm saying to you today, God's looking for an army. Everyone stand up inside. Oh, yes, we got to run our race. We don't do it in our own energy, our own strength. But there has to be that firm inward decision that we will do it. We have to choose. God will not choose for you. We have to choose. And we have to step out. We got to get out of the boat. Some of us, I think, are under a lot of oppression because we're not doing what God wants us to do. You see, we always think because we're doing something, we're attacked, and we will be. But sometimes because we're passive and we're doing nothing to further the kingdom of God. Boy, I tell you, we're so vulnerable. The enemy comes and just does his number on us if he can. Today, God wants you. He wants me to run a race. And it won't be easy. But you know what? I want to run it with all that's within me. I want to run it like I did that day I fell in the cinders. I still got up and crossed the line. I want to run that race no matter what because I know one of these days I'm going to hear him say to me, whether you ever say it to me or not, it doesn't matter, but he'll say it to me, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. Don't you want that more than anything? Isn't that greater than any possession that you could ever have on this earth? And it's not wrong to have possessions. But I'm here to tell you, the greatest thing in all the world will be on that day. And I'll look into his eyes and he'll look into my eyes. I'll look into the one who lost himself in order that I could be saved. And I'll look into his eyes and he'll say, Jerry, he knows my name. I've heard him say Jerry. (laughs) He'll say, Jerry, well done. That good and faithful servant. Boy, that means more to me than anything you could ever give me. Amen. Now, how about you? How about you? There's areas we need help here. We really, really do. And you don't have to be a spiritual giant. You got to have a willing heart. And you got to realize it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. And to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And some of you never taught a Sunday school class, but God's been te- talking to you about being a teacher. You say, I don't know how. I'll train you. Others will train you. If you really want to teach, I'll help you. God will help you. It'll get done. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Don't you think I ought to land? Stand up. (laughs) See, when you laugh, you, you become more vulnerable. Do you know that? With eyes closed, how many of you could say today, you know, Pastor... I don't like to say this, but God's got my number today. Would you lift your hand up? Now, you can stay where you are, or you can come up and pray about it and let God seal it in your heart. Which will it be? 
Come on down. Come on. Step out in Jesus' name right now. You that lifted your hand. 